Wow. Welcome to the We Talks. Welcome to the We Talks. <laughs> Hold on to your hats. Yes. We're not actually sure where this is going to go. I thought we had a We Talks new podcast, but it could have been the Woof Worth of podcast it goes into or the Driving to the Rest. I can't actually remember what we decided on. Do you remember? I have lost track of where things go. <laughs> Me too. But not to worry because Ilya knows. Yeah, he knows, he knows but where's he going to say? He will put it in the notice where he puts it. Yeah. Okay. When he sends it out on the newsletter and he sends it out on Telegram, which are our main channels. Oh, well, anyway, if you're connected with us in any way through you any know. of the channels that we have, you should be able to figure it out. Actually, easily. if you're listening to this, you already did figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> That's where it is. Well, what, yes. what, what I'm talking about, though, is the we talks, the written part. The oh, part. yes. So for the written articles that we're going to be talking about today, go to blog.thewetalks.com. Right. Okay. That's, That's right. where you go. Yeah. Right. There, as in the word, the we, W-E, talks. With an S at the end, dot com. Okay, so got blog it. blog dot thewetalks.com. Hopefully you can just search the We Talks and it shows that. No, doesn't. They try you have it. to be really very yeah, specific. Don't forget that we're shadow banned like crazy. Okay. Everything that we do gets shadow banned. So nothing gets found. <laughs> well, it's important that we stay shadow banned. <gasps> Why? So that the um, split can commence. Commence, continue. You don't want to be waking up the masses. Continue. Yeah, the masses shouldn't get access. As a matter of fact, if you're one of the masses, turn this off <laughs> right now. Walk away. Shut your ears. Right. Indeed. Indeed. That would be the smartest thing to do. Yes, yes. So I thought we could talk about the week because today I read a very interesting question that indicates a little bit of more explanation could or more exploration could be done around the nature of the we. Um, and the question was, when we, like Larry and me, us, us when, when us, we, when us well, went to... Our pronouns are us. And <laughs> start with the pronouns. Okay, okay. <laughs> when we went to the Lemurian... When through, us, us went to... Through the Lemurian portal in uh, Spain, Barcelona, near Barcelona, um, the person asked, did the we go with you? <laughs> yeah. Right? Um, and why did it tickle you? <laughs> because it implies something separate. Exactly. Yeah. It that implies they're, something separate. They're a rider, Klingon, or yeah. they're a part, I guess, uh, attachment to you yeah. or a separate being, yeah. not you. Right, right, right. And that would be like me leaving my hands or my arms and legs behind before I go somewhere and then coming back and putting the back on again. It's like you can't really do that, right? Well, you can, but it's messy. Uh, you couldn't put them back on again and have them function. Well, I didn't say function. <laughs> Just saw them on. Anyways, not the best, e not, not the best not example, work. but because like you said, you could possibly do that. Right. In this case, the we and ye, ye are not separate. Right. They are the same. Yes. The only thing that may be different is your perception of who you're talking to. You'll perceive a singular mm -hmm. or a oh, not singular. Not a singular. <laughs> yes. And remember that they're not actually called the we. That's the name that I gave them. When you were two or something? <laughs> when I was very small. <laughs> yes. So. And when you say them. Yes, exactly see, the same. You're implying that it's something other than right, you. Right. So it's very difficult to use vocabulary of any language to speak about this. Um, it's almost like when a person talks about themselves in the third person. Yeah. So Inelia sitting here right now, and Inelia wants to know, Larry, what do you think about the we? <laughs> it's a little bit like that. It doesn't quite indicate the actual identity aspect of it. Yeah, yeah. 
there's uh some people have alter egos i think something mm-hmm. is sometimes the word and they'll say that person did it not them or they'll imply a split personality or they'll have a drunk personality or something else right <laughs> yeah or the mom personality or like that personality that that's indicative of things like possessions and stuff yeah. like that sometimes and those yeah. possessions do mom. come through and drive at certain points in people's lives yeah and you can say you could get rid of that. Right, because and it's not you. It's, it's not in a, you. a different being or group of beings who are riding your body. Riding your body. And, and your personality. Personality. Or, like that. Yeah. Doing things that are often outside your personality. Honestly. Yeah, obviously, yeah. But the we, as a word trying to describe what it is that you are, isn't a separate thing from you. No, no. You it's couldn't almost, get rid of it because no. it is you. Yeah. It's like you can't get rid of your soul, but can right. you? No. And you can't get rid of, like, what you see. You see it. Even if you close your eyes, you can see the back of your eyelids or whatever it is, you know? Right. So the we might be better thought of as the we point of view. Yeah. Our perspective. Ex- yeah, like expression, I call expression, it. Expression. You know? The we expression. Mm-hmm. And viewpoint, yes. Yeah. So it's... It's a very, very different viewpoint as well to a singular, like what I would call in Elia. Right. In singular, what we mean by that, singular means... The person the that... I, me, myself. Yes. Individual. Yeah, in the individual person. The normal state of awareness that mm-hmm. most, almost every human being carries Mm -hmm. their singular beingness focused on their singular this now incarnation oh so a better question would have been for example larry when you went to the lemurian uh through the lemurian portal did you leave larry behind i think i might have (laughs) you left larry behind well honestly yeah because i think my only remembrance was i'm still here (laughs) <laughs> I don't know who went to Lemuria, but I don't think I did. Okay, not a good example then. <laughs> well, that's the thing is my awareness of me didn't go there. But my memories and my experience of hands and time and all the other things. If, if you don't know what I'm talking about, go to the Wu for Thought article. Yes, the Wu right? for Thought talks about the Lemurian experience. No, no? no it was a Lemurian experience. I don't know where are we talking oh, about. Oh, actually it? an article, a podcast. A podcast yes. about Lemurians. Yes, right. Yes, yes. And we're going to have a class probably by the time this airs. It's already... Either today or very soon. Yeah, yeah. Okay, but the Lemurian and me going there, that's not a great one because okay, so I didn't have a nice Larry, firm grasp of my awareness yes. on the way. <laughs> when you go to the lake, do you leave Larry at home? You know, I, I in the morning, <laughs> in the morning sometimes I go to the lake in my my head. In your head, you go. I'm to I'm looking the lake? at the lake and I'm thinking I'm there, uh-huh. but I'm not there. Uh-huh. So, do you leave Larry behind? No, Larry goes there, huh? <laughs> exactly. And I'm not trying to be difficult. I'm just trying to no, relate it to the way exactly. that everyone will hear what you're saying and understand it, right? And co- that's and what it's because and that's why I like that about. question so much because it brings a lot of open discussion to understand this better yep i like those questions i just don't want to get you frustrated oh i wasn't okay don't good. worry no so in your experience of life you don't leave any of you behind anywhere you go any anytime you no. are always bringing you everywhere yeah yeah, yeah. pretty much yeah and when you refer to they uh-huh. we the we as uh-huh. a they uh-huh. as someone not you uh-huh. how do you mean to actually say it i would say I would say we've all the time. Yeah. Right. And when I was a little kid, I would speak like that. And my family would say that I was the, ro- the royal we or whatever. The royal we. I say things like, we need to change our clothes because they got muddy and I need a new dress. We need a new dress um, to have our lunch because we need to be decent for lunch. So please change our clothes because i was so little i didn't know how to change my clothes <laughs> oh my yes the royal we needs their dress changed yes and her hair combed and her hair uh, or their hair combed <laughs> and it's not like a like the whole gender thing pronounced they instead of a we instead of a 
there because they don't identify as he or she. It's not like that at all. Maybe that's why they came up with the pronouns to confuse this whole thing, make it even more difficult. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Anyways, Hmm. some of the things you're going to find at blog.thewetalks.com. It's a little bit of talking about being born. Yeah, we we have... uh, we have are written that we have written <laughs> we have written we have written see how it starts already um something about birth and uh, before birth actually it starts with something pre-birth uh, pre-birth uh let's see what exactly what we have yeah we have a pre-birth one we have a pre-birth we, we are have, born. We're born we have a meeting the family that would be your family Yes, their family. Oh, right. Yes, I see what you mean. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) And there's some, you know, interesting things in all of them. Um, One of the things that interested me about the pre-birth experience of, like, both, right? Like, they're both awareness states of we and I was that um, many individuals identified with that expanded awareness and coming in and becoming an I, me and myself. And when I looked at that, I found it interesting because there is a lot of light workers on earth who come from Uh, beings or souls or whatever you want to call them who don't have like a massive separation between the I and their collective self they're not the we but they're very similar because their collective awareness is part and parcel they don't just leave it behind when they go to the lake Um, and as we move forward in awareness expansion here on earth, the individuals who chose the light paradigm, we, or they, or whatever, you know, the person becomes more and more connected with the high frequency human collective and can move in and out of that awareness at will. And it's a very different state of experience of life than being stuck in the I, me, and myself, day in, day out, 24-7, in my opinion. Yeah, I hear you. I'm trying to understand. But I, and I, think, I think what I'm hearing is that um, the light beings who came to Earth to what they would call raise the vibration of the planet or the frequency of the planet or the vibrational frequency of the planet or... And by the light paradigm or all of these um, mm-hmm. things, they they came not because uh, they individually wanted to do something. Oftentimes it was they as their group. Is that what yeah. you mean? Yeah. Their group of violet soul spectrums <laughs> right. all wanted to join in the um, bringing of this Yes. and uh, help answer the call of Gaia those a lot of helps and yeah. join in join it in wasn't a, I'm going to go do this it was I'm going to join in the assistance group yeah we're going to together yes those kind of things mm-hmm. that's a collective group mm-hmm. which isn't a we in no. your description what no. what the we are isn't a collective group of violet souls for example no. it's a, a separate thing yes <clears throat> but it is Similar in sense that you can comprehend it, yes. like a multitude and not a singular. So, well, it, even saying that's quite. not right because it's not a multitude; it's no. a singular that's not one. Right. <laughs> so it's a singular with it's extreme a, amounts of yeah. viewpoints. Yeah. And that's that's part of what it makes it a little challenging is because we're trying to think of it in a way that we can relate to it from our own point of view, which we don't have that point of view. You can't imagine what life P 
appears and feels like if you're an ant. Right. But don't have ant brain, ant sense of no. chemical absorption of message. Mm-hmm. Ant has smell means this and doesn't even smell. It is like, here's the path or whatever. <laughs> exactly, yeah. <laughs> you don't comprehend ant world. No. You barely, we barely comprehend cat or dog world. And we spend a lot of time with them. I know. Yeah. So it's similar in sense to that as this is a, a way of comp comprehension that really isn't something that we collectively share as a point of view Mm -hmm. or a point of awareness right and it isn't something we necessarily strive for it's something other than what we are yeah i think that's probably the best way that i could say it in a way that might be comprehended i like it yeah i like it having said that if you could communicate with an ant about ant world and ant life, like the movies, remember that movie? Ants. Grasshoppers or ants. <laughs> is, ants. Is. Ants and the hoppers have a war. <coughs> you could get information that you otherwise wouldn't be able to get, like the what's the um, flavor of the ground here or whatever, whatever ants know about. And in the same token, the we as a point of reference, what do they see? And how do they experience what we take for granted as, like, normal everything, right? Mm. It'd be like if you are a fish in the water, you don't even know there's water. No. <laughs> it's all water. Yeah. But the we know that there's other than water. Yes. And so you could say, yes, your water's really nice. What water? <laughs> That's the, This is what you're in, is the water. Right. Okay. <laughs> So what would we else, what else, what what else could we possibly be in, right? Yeah. Well, for example, there's not the water, <laughs> like air. Air. <laughs> well, what do you do in the air? Well, you would die. <laughs> That's a good idea. Thanks for the help. <laughs> <Yes>. Thanks <laughs> but for the help. <laughs> thank you for helping me understand. What is the air? Yes. The air that's not the water. Mm. Right. So you could see it would take. A little bit of a, a little bit of spinning in a circle, trying to have a conversation because the comprehensions are two different things, and Indeed. you don't know what it is that you can collect. Mm-hmm. What data can I get from uh, this comprehension that assists me with swimming in the water? Mm-hmm. We like to joke about bananas because that's invariably um, where we end up. Indeed, yes. Trying to get through the bananas. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So. Um, the we were pretty much quite private for me. Um, it's like, it's almost like saying uh, I was pretty much private to myself, right? I'm pretty sure that most people growing up and everything, they're quite private about themselves, right? To themselves and to others. Yeah. You wouldn't like sit in front of a screen and talk about yourself. Ad nauseum. I mean, some people do. I think I've seen them do that. Yeah, they do. But they make not, good actors. It's like yeah, they change there now. No, there's a lot of people influencers. I think that's all they do. But um, and I've met people who would do that, and I actually was surrounded by many people who did that. That's all they did was talk about themselves, and it was quite fine, right? Um, but. For me, it's like a little bit interesting that it became interesting. Um, I wasn't in any way or form aware that either me as an individual expression or as a we expression were in any way interesting. And uh, when I started creating all the tools and everything for people to expand their awareness and step into high frequency co-creation around the planet. Um, when I began, it was like there was no words such as we or I or me at all. And a few people said, you know, you need to make it more um, relatable, relatable, comprehensible. Yes, yeah, so start putting the word I and me in there. In your writing, and that was a, an, an evolution. I had to 
evolve into that. And I'm really good at it now. I talk about I all the time. I said the word I about 20 times in the last minute. And um, so at some point, people started figuring out that like uh, the we was more closer to the personality and like the expression of who I am than an I. And at that point, for like, when I started doing um, public events, they would mm. come in. Um, the we would come in in a sense, well, what you say, would, what you mean is that uh, you become more from me. that perspective, more yourself and yes. less your Persona. Created persona. Exactly. The created persona yeah. is the one that you can relate to. You can say, hey, yeah. you know, I really like your clothes. Thank oh, you. why thank you. Yeah. I think I like my clothes too. That's <laughs> right. the persona. Yeah. So there's a persona created to facilitate Interact. interaction with people. Right. That people are comfortable interacting with. Yes. Yeah. They don't get stuck in bananas just sitting right. by you. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, during events, I very rarely did any type of event through the personality of Inelia, right? It was mostly the we per, um, expression of, because it was more expanded and people went there for expanded information, right? Mm -hmm. So a few people detected it uh, during the years. And then during one of our events here at the Shaman Shack, um, the information came out about the we. You talked about it, I think, or we talked about we've, it. I think we've talked about it in a podcast in the past, sometime. or something. And then people wanted to sit with the we yeah. and ask the we questions. Yeah, that's like, where the bananas comes up. Yeah, and then so we sat there, but sitting there, like sitting. When I used to do the events before, I would be walking and talking and stuff, and it it was pretty like flowy but it was very hard to go from the I personality to the we personality because it, I, the only way I can explain it is it uses different neurons in your head yeah. <laughs> right and so I would have, like breathing I had to be reminded and blinking and drinking water and moving the body so it doesn't get stuck in one location all these things were difficult uh, as a wee expression. And during events, I had a team that would help me out, right? Make sure I ate, drank, breathed, and all the things. And um, so that became very interesting for the people in that event where we sat with the wee um, and they could ask questions about, mostly about themselves. For me, we had a... Uh, a period of having to learn how to translate for the we and to the we because if a person said tell me about me we usually was right tell me about me um how many lives have i had something like that and the we would i would have to translate to say they are talking about probably soul incarnation on this planet <laughs> that are relevant to this life. And they went, oh, okay, you've just had one. But of course that didn't mean full-on incarnations or the body's incarnations, right? The, the body's experience of incarnations in the past or anything like that. So it was very limited. Everything had to be translated. Um, oh, yeah, it was hard and difficult to have any type of interaction uh, what to wait interaction when we were talking about the way in which the human collective functions as a operating system and blah 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 it was fine you know talking about that for hours but when it was a one-on-one -on -one interaction with other people and what they might be interested in it was slightly different right it was a different experience and then Eventually, the, we got a little bit bored and we just step away. <laughs> like, it's like, I would say, you know, growing up, that would happen to me a lot. And I was taught 
social niceties, like you don't step away, you don't get up and walk away when somebody becomes boring. Okay. They might take offense. Well, they, they might will. take offense. They'll they might understand why in the middle of a sentence. They'll misunderstand. Why is it? Why did you just get up and leave? Yeah. 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 <clears throat> yeah. So that type of thing was interesting, right? Um, I've had individuals saying, oh, I can see I'm part of the we. You can't be part of the we. You're either the we or you're not. <laughs> Right. It's almost like saying I'm part of your soul. I don't think so. I don't think you're part of my soul. Mm. No. <laughs> you're your own soul. <laughs> you have your own soul and you are your own soul. You're not part of mine. And vice versa. I'm not part of your soul. <laughs> I think people. Um... But like I said before, they relate to that coming in from a more expanded awareness of a collective consciousness and then stepping into the singular self. I think that people relate to that. I I think maybe. Yeah. Some people, not everybody, of course. Some people. Mm -hmm. The um, tricky part is trying to continue the conversation in a way that's interesting to both, you know? Yes. Yes. That's been the challenge. It has been the challenge. And it was a challenge even more so before because the we perspective and the singular perspective were separated to the degree where they weren't even conscious or remembering each other. Right. So um, we did do some work on that, integrating those so yes. that they're aware could, of each other's and I could translate rememberings. <laughs> they're like connected and you can communicate. Yes. yes, indeed. Both awarenesses. It'd be like being able to talk to what you would think of your um, astral self and your your, maybe your dream self, let's say. Your dreaming self and your waking self talking to each other instead yeah, of barely sounds, remembering each other. Yeah, that is very, very accurate, actually. Yes. That's, that's the most accurate description I've heard. Right. So if you could ask your dream self stuff, what would you ask your dream self? You know, that's where we start to stumble because all the things in dream are interesting in dream and all the things in waking are interesting in waking and some of them yes. link and some of them don't exactly and they're not even necessarily completely relevant to each other mm-hmm. it's like how do you get from here to there what do you mean you turn around and you're there <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but if i try and turn around i'm not there yeah it's like it's because you're not dreaming <laughs> right yeah. right and that's a that's that's uh yeah that's a stumble mm-hmm so the 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 basic pre-birth memory article mm-hmm. that the we wrote describing their experience before they were born and then finding a body and convincing or finding a body willing to host and things like that mm-hmm. those that conversation predicates um, some comprehension of how this whole incarnation in a body part functions. Oh, yeah. Yeah, You have to have some understanding of all of that. Yes. Which which makes having the conversation cold like this a little bit. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's like, well, how much do you have to explain? Right. Right, Because I don't know what people don't know. Don't you know? Yeah. And most people do know a lot of things, but it's all... I guess, um, mushed with stuff that is in, not true That's or is completely fabricated yeah. or f- designed for a disempowerment or for confusion or mm. because a million things, right? Or because their experience was different. Or because they saw something and they interpreted it differently. Also too. Yeah, yeah it's like a, uh, a basic problem. So what can make the comprehending the article a little bit easier is just the basics about human bodies and Mm -hmm. human souls and what's the difference between a human soul and a we the difference between the two um the human soul is a singular construct that is connected to their collective self which would be you call the uh, 
humans' collective consciousness? Yeah, so there's different, uh, many collective selves, I should say. So one of them would be the human collective, right? Everybody who has decided to have a body and a soul is a human. Everyone who's decided to have a body that's a soul? A body and a soul. A physical body okay, okay, okay. and a subtle body, which is a soul. Together, function is as one. Join in the human collective. Yes. Okay. But they also come from different collectives. Like you said, you know, some people Souls come from... Souls might come from a, like an Arcturian collective yeah, or something exactly, like that. Yeah. I mean, that's yeah. whatever, you know, a Pleiadian collective or mm-hmm. yeah. fairy collective or whatever collective you might imagine that doesn't have body and a soul. Right, right. Or maybe that does, but yep. a different group of those. Mm, no. 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 So... So humans as body and soul are the only expression of body with... Humans. S- yes. Body and soul. with... Or like singular body with singular soul combined. Yes. I guess that's the right words. Is that even the right words to describe it? Yeah. Yeah, I would say Good so. enough? Yeah. 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 Okay. Mm-hmm. So the we joined a body. Yes. And the body had a soul. No. The body and the soul that you've, you're in with had a different soul attached to it at some point. The body had a different soul. Yes. But that soul was going to die. The body was going to die. The body, sorry. The body and the soul were going to exit at around three months of pregnancy. Right. So the body that... Through an abortion. The body that you are. Yes. And the soul that was going to be with it were going to do their joining for a three-month short duration in the belly experience yes for whatever reason they wanted i don't know do you know what it would have been it felt like they wanted a completion like they needed one last experience that's how it felt one last experience of joining together of something yeah one last experience of something together and then that would be over that's how it felt (laughs) yeah and if we think about what they were after being aborted some it wasn't a high frequency experience they were after. I don't know. I mean I don't I don't That's think... not a high frequency experience in my ideas. Well why not? I'm pretty sure if you stab me in the body until I die, it's not a high frequency experience. Uh what if it was to do with just wanting the experience of being in the womb for three months and then they didn't want to continue into consciousness and birth. If that's what they wanted, then okay. Right. That's so the way that, I saw that it. part that part of the first three months of brand new baby, yeah. barely aware and yeah. just connecting that yeah. kind of experience, that's yeah. probably that's not a ne- necessarily a negative experience. No, it isn't. It's probably all positive. Right. It is all positive, exactly. And that has a Duration, that's just a duration of what that is. It doesn't right. have to be 30 years or 60 years or 90 years. It can be three months. Exactly, yeah. Okay. So so we can understand it that way mm-hmm. without applying all the other judgments right. to it. Because exactly. how it ends is however it ends. It's, yeah, exactly. It could have been meningitis. It could have been... All sorts of things. Slip right? and a fall. It could mm-hmm. have been spontaneous. It's yeah. all different ways yeah. that it could have ended. Exactly, yes. Okay. Right. You'd said it was ending through abortion. Yes. Which... Was the herbs plant? or something? No, I think it was. I don't know. However, uh, the first time I don't know because <laughs> you know my mother tried to abort the baby several times because that was her to go she mission. Did. She was like, "Here, I'm gonna have a baby, and it's gonna be short, and then we're gonna have an abortion." Yeah, and it was in alignment with what the baby and the soul wanted to have. Exactly. Yeah, so that's all three were together. Her. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Which makes sense why she would continue to try. Right. Because she didn't know the plan changed. Exactly. (laughs) And how did the plan change? So at that point, there was a request to the physical body. Once the soul, to to say, once your soul leaves, could you stay? And can we take over as a soul? And at first the body said, no, no way, no way, Jose. This is all planned, pre-planned. It's not going to change. I don't want it changed. And uh, no, not going to happen. Right. Yeah. A lot of bodies that you approach said that, right? Yeah. 
And because uh, this wasn't the only body approached, right? No, no, it wasn't. Anyways, this one though. This one though, we tried a little manipulation. Manipulation. Yep. And it was through uh, uh, duty. 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 Yes. If you don't do it, the loss in the world is going to be so much worse. So much, you know. You could do like if you say yes, it's going to be so much better for humanity, and, and it's a job, don't it's be a selfish. mission. Don't be selfish. It's just you a know, small just little, a little request. It's not going to be it's long. It's going to change the world for a better place. It's very temporary. It's not going to be long. The consequence of saying no are severe. It's severe. But don't be selfish. Yeah, and the body went oh, okay. Yeah. All right, I'll do it for a little bit. But of course, what the body thinks is a little bit, and what the we, we think of as a little bit. It's a very, very different. Right. I think bodies need to be more specific if they want <laughs> to make deals. That they <laughs> and that's I mean, a good point, isn't it? Yes. yes. Be very specific. Be specific. In your deals. But even if you are specific about your deal, you know, you can change your mind. So you know. <laughs> Yes. So you can always change your mind, yes. These are just ideas and plans and mm-hmm. processes and thoughts and agreements. The agreement, though, is the important part. Mm-hmm. Once yeah. you have made an agreement, then changing your mind is something you can do. But it's clearly there's there's momentum with the agreement exactly, in the first place. Yeah. So. And it's a little bit harder because then you have, once you become part of that collective, then you have the human collective's agreement that you need to have also. Right. So there's right. more agreements involved. And the rules of engagement agreements that you came into in the solid uh, world of expression. Right. So all these things kind of make it a little bit hard sometimes to... Change your, you can change your mind. It's, but it's easy to say, but it's a little harder to do. To basically do, what you're saying. yes. To carry it out seems to be a little bit harder. Exactly. Yeah. That, I think, was a bit of the information that most people, they don't have the first part, or if they do have the first part, they don't have the second part. Yeah. And they think the first part must be wrong, because <laughs> yeah. they changed their mind and nothing happened. Yeah. Yes, indeed. Or maybe they changed their mind and a little bit happened, but not all the things they wanted. Right, and they th- seem to think that the past exists, even though it's only in your in your imagination, and that the future exists, even though it's only in your imagination, and in the present time they expect those things to be, to happen, right? To be. And that's not necessarily how it works. Right. It's like moment to moment... Like when I people say, how is the split coming along? I say, yeah, how is it coming along in yourself? How much time did you spend today? Low frequency, <laughs> thoughts, engagements, <laughs> feelings, emotions and whatnot, right? Right. Oh, not very much. Actually, I don't think any. Well, it's going splendidly then, right? Because you chose the light. And it's that expression that we're talking about. Anyway, it's going back to the we... <laughs> <laughs> so, one of the one of the data points about the the we and this soul part and you know that soul left wherever it goes where do souls go it went back to the in-between place and then the we in a pseudo soul joined the new body and mm-hmm. the pseudo soul i'm calling it a pseudo soul because it isn't a soul Right, right. It's something that resembles a soul well enough to replace the space that a soul would go. Or yes, be. mechanically it's pretty much, you know, very, very close. I mean, it fits. It, it works. So it works. it's imperceivably different. Right. Different, but imperceivably so. Well, some people perceive it, but not many. Okay. I mean, you have to be extremely sensitive and psychic to perceive it. And I have met those people. I have met them. They look into my eyes and go... <gasps> You're a collective consciousness. You're not a we or like, you're not an I. <laughs> and I said, that's right. But it's very, very hard, hard for that to happen. It's, uh, it's, a person needs to be really, really, really perceptive. Right. Speaking so of- it is detectable, but not by the regular person. One of the interesting bits that's even more difficult to comprehend is that that we borrowed a bit of a soul the size of... Universes. The universes. <laughs> yes. The size of universes, just a tiny bit of it, yes. is enough to generate 
a pseudo soul. Yes. A tiny bit. Yeah. And smaller than a quirk. Yes. Right. Not even shouldn't be noticeable, but unfortunately. Fortunately, or fortunately, or I don't know how that has ended up yet, because it isn't ended yet. No, it never will. <laughs> that being noticed now. Yes. Yes. But that might be a good thing. It's a thing. <laughs> I mean, good, bad, positive, negative. It's you know, it's not it's, like it's a it's it's, it's a potentially it's, universe altering. Yes, it is potentially universe altering indeed. Yes. yes. So there's that in the sense of a wild card. It is a wild card, yes. And uh, I think that conversation probably is uh, one that could be had on its own. Yeah, I think so, yeah. That would be a conversation about Atlas, as we've named. Yeah, of course it's not the historical or mythological Atlas. It's just no. a word we use. It's a word we use, like we, mm-hmm. to describe yeah. a thing that we're just Very meaning. It's like yeah. a, a soul the size of universes Universe. yeah. and a particle of that soul borrowed by, and I don't even know, you see, you can't even say, how do you borrow a chunk of it? <laughs> you borrowed a chunk of it, which is clearly not the right word. <laughs> right. <laughs> but it describes, in essence... That a piece of that universe, all size soul, became the soul that the we inhabit to join a human body in an incarnation. Exactly, yeah. So that's that. And that's that. And it's very difficult indeed to even function as a singular. That's been part of it, right? Um my experience of singular is different to what I've seen other people have as an experience of singular. Um, when uh, when as I went public in 2010, so many people who already knew me uh, started asking questions about things like ascension or expansion of awareness and raising vibrations and frequencies and other stuff, yeah. right? Um, and to me, it was difficult to relate. I didn't know what people did know, what didn't know, and how to relate it, right, to, for it to be understood. And it's almost like uh, a little experience I, I share. At some point, I stayed in an apartment and there was no people there uh, my son and my husband at the time were on holiday. And I was there by myself. And then I learned why in my entire life I've never been... Never alone. Never been alone. You don't get left alone on your own I devices. No. Because you're epically poor at caring for or even knowing what needs to be done. Yeah. To keep your body going. Right. So... Yeah, so that's a part of the difference, you see, because most people will know when they're by themselves or even with other people when to breathe, when to get up, when to have uh, food, water, sleep, kapati, and all that type of stuff. But for many years, I would have an alarm to let me know, have breakfast now, have lunch now, have dinner now, now feed your children, collect them from school. I had alarms going off all day long. To let me know what to do. You still have them going on all times of the day. And I hear those things dinging <laughs> off. And I'm like, what are we supposed to do now? Oh, what is the time for now? But it's... <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> it's quite, but not but, as much as I used to. No, not as much. No, not I can't imagine. Because not as much. <laughs> just usually one about 10 o'clock. It's like, oh, that's when you're supposed to go to sleep. Yes. And then uh, yes. there's some other times. Noon or one or I don't know what times. Yeah. But basically... When you live with me, it's like a heart muscle, you know? When your heart muscle's in a little Petri dish and they put another heart muscle in there, they sync up and the heart beats are together. Okay. So if I'm up, you're up. If I'm out, you're out. If I'm eating, you're eating. <laughs> yes. So you don't have to like have an alarm. You just have to... Yes. Sync. Exactly. Yeah. Right? Which yeah. made me fishing kind of a challenge. 
Because I leave for four days or so. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, going away and reconnecting and resyncing, and then going away and coming back and resyncing, that took up a lot of energy and time. I didn't notice it, but you did. Yes. I did, yeah. 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 And often you'd say, "Have you had? Have you had anything to eat today?" I, like, I, I don't, don't know. know. Which is today. <laughs> 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 Anyways, that time when I was by myself for a few yeah. days, I sat down to look at the sunset and then it was dark and then it was sunrise and then it was very bright and then it was sunset again. And it's like all within a few minutes. And after like this, the sun going up and down like that. Um, <laughs> That's really interesting. Yeah. I look thought, at the sun. It's so fast. It's so fast. <laughs> <laughs> I, I went, wait, wait, wait. Oh. No. Uh oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> Am I in trouble? <laughs> and I tried to move my body, and every single bit of my body hurt. Yeah. It hurt. Yeah. And then I had to go and start sipping some water. Yeah. Oh, that hurt too. And then I laid down, and then I got up, and then I would drink some water. Oh, everything hurt. I and can then imagine. I find, you know, like I had to do the things like cook food and go party and have showers and stuff like that. And wow, it was painful. I was like, I see why I'm not allowed to live on my own. I mean, not allowed, but it's not conducive to delivering the message of empowerment for me to live on my own. <laughs> That's a better way of saying it. <laughs> so... How does that relate to the we experience is that, first of all, the we experience hasn't got, this is the first incarnated into a bipedal kind of experience incarnated, right, in the flesh. And the other experiences of the physical universe were through other beings but they weren't beings that had like a very distinct time me and myself. So, for example, I remember the forest as being like a way to interact with the physical universe because this has been going on, like this experiment, even to incarnate in the singular, has been going on for, like, we might think, millions of years, right? In different stages. We don't know. Okay. So, I didn't know that. So... And also from the perspective of souls, human souls, that is very similar too, because the physical bodies and the souls actually look very similar. Uh, but the souls are very subtle beings from a different, very subtle universe. And they wanted to have like a, a joint experience in this physical universe. So this physical universe and the souls created physical bodies that were bipedal and very similar to the souls. And, but to get to that point, there was a lot of other tests and tryouts and stuff. Yeah. And they also, the human uh, souls, also tried experiencing the physical universe through plants and trees and things like that. Mm. Right. Mm -hmm. And they're very connected. They're like one being now. Uh, but that's a different conversation again. But we were not trees, but they did burrow into them to see, like, expression of what the physicality was. But it was, it's very, very different how a forest will experience the physical universe or Earth or itself to how a person does. I would think radically different, yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's very different. Not radically exactly, but different. Okay. Very different. It's very different. Very different, yes. Things like, uh, as you've introduced the experience and sort of facilitated the connections in some ways, when you're connecting with tree, then your experience of time changes, like what you were expressing when you would look at the sunset, go up and down, up and down, up and down. That's yes. more like what a tree would experience. Yes. Like different experience of time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. A different, uh, yes, a different experience of time. And motion. Well, time is motion. It's the movement of things through space, space. 
we perceive as time, but it's all we are seeing as actually movement. In one moment, the branch is in one location, the next moment is a different location, and we it's our brains that put those two together and call it time. The branch moves through time, but it isn't actually, it's just moving through space. Anyways, yes, very, very different. And our utility sense sake, so we can wrap this up because it's been going for a while. Okay. For utility's sake, there are some things that most of us people look at and jump straight onto really what I think the mass of humanity thinks. Like what? So we'll say... Um, Well, I'm not going to give a specific because, well, no, I could give a specific. There was, there was a time in the past where we were worried about uh, masks and things like that. Mm -hmm. And um, the awareness came, uh, had to bend from the expanded we, which was that there is no particle that's a virus that's infectious, for example. Mm hmm and uh, the singulars, us, and the planet at the time were like, don't say that, that's crazy. Mm -hmm. But it it ends up not being so crazy. And mm -hmm. in fact, mm, true. Mm -hmm. And so the, the experience that we had as a group connected to um, you over the last few years wasn't the one that the mass amount of humanity fell for in a sense in the sense that we had the ability to see outside the envelope a little bit hey look this is more true this is more true not this other thing that's actually not true mm -hmm. and from there we can make choices about our life that were i would say high frequency you know mm -hmm. so at a utility sake that's valuable and i can't tell you, you, whoever's listening, you, how many times, how many things over the last decade or more that I've known you and the we and listen to what you have to say mm -hmm. that even though it many times is like, no, can't be or no, really? Or no, I like that fantasy story that I thought was true. I can't tell you how many of those there were that having listened to you and investigated because you know generally speaking most of us like to hear a thing and then we'll go verify it yes <laughs> right? verify it was somebody if somebody else says it too then, then maybe it's true it maybe <laughs> maybe but if you just say it that's fine but you know i need to go verify yeah, this stuff verifies, yeah. so there was a lot of that verifying going on but it's turned out 99.9 .9 I mean, okay, it's just 100% of the time. I mean, there's no reason for 99.9. <laughs> Leave us a little bit of room no, for there's, there hasn't misinterpretation. Been, <laughs> the only misinterpretations, if any, were on the hearing part, not the saying part. Yes, yeah. indeed. Yeah. That's true. So it gives a giant leg up on experiencing any and all of the things, especially, and not exclusively, but especially the things that you really have a very tenuous grasp on, like pre-births or in between lives or near death experience or, or mm -hmm. fairies or elves or aliens or any of the things that you like we're only scratching at in a collective world yeah they generally have an answer that helps steer you into what actually is going on mm -hmm. and if you're able to listen and able to hear it then you're gonna get a big leg up on comprehending what's actually happening Yes, indeed. So that's where and what I see they bring to us in our conversations. The ability, you know, to speak the truth. And I mean truth, I don't mean unagreed upon truth. I mean the truth, the <laughs> truth that is the truth. Yes. Uh-huh. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. 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 Right, it's good enough for that's a chat. good enough for a Good chat. enough for our first we chat. Yeah. So, It'll be more in the future at some point in the future, like several months from now. <laughs> hopefully not several months, but you know. Every two months or so we'll talk about the A month or wee. two, we'll do a wee chat. Yes. We'll look at the articles that have been written. The, the written articles will give you a giant leg up on comprehending and understanding the journey that we had in 
coming to a body. Yes. And the experience they have uh, uh, meeting their family. Yes. <laughs> and their family meeting them <laughs> and things like that. And yeah. I'm not sure what articles are coming, but, you know, go there, okay. check it out. Go to blog.theweetalks.com. There you go. Go there. See you there. See you there. Bye. Bye. Love you, darling. Love you too, honey.